Welcome to the training video program. In this video, we will be introducing FSDB dumping. What you're about to learn in this video are what is FSDB and how to dump FSDB with VCS. Also the various dumping methods and frequently used dumping tests. An FSDB stores the simulation results in an efficient and compact format where Synopsys provides the object files that can be linked to common simulators to directly store the simulation results in FSDB. You may use system tasks or tickle commands for VHDL and Verilog to dump values into FSDB during simulation. To dump FSDB with VCS, you first need to set VCS Home and Verdi Home to the installation directories and then compile and generate a simulation executable with debug access option. The debug access option enables debugging capabilities. You may specify additional options to enable the required debugging capabilities. For example, debug access plus all enables the complete set of debugging capabilities. For more options of debug access, please refer to the documentation for details. There are three ways to dump an FSDB with VCS, and the simplest way is to add the FSDB dumper system task in your design. This will generate value changes for fundamental signals in the FSDB file. And the default name of the FSDB file is novas.fsdb. Other ways to dump FSDB with VCS is using UCLI commands. You may create a tickle script with dump or FSDB dumpvars commands and input the script by using dash UCLI dash I option. The two examples shown here uses different UCLI commands, but generates identical FSDB files. You may notice that the FSDB dump virus used is the same command name as FSDB dumping test by removing the dollar sign. Well, the only difference is in tickle script, all arguments are string, whereas in system tasks, all arguments are part of HDL, so there might be some string conversion issue. Now let's take a look at the dumping methods. There are three methods supported for specifying options. You may specify an option on the simulator command line or by using an environment variable, or specify an option in an FSDB dumping command. If the same option was used with two or more methods, it will be taken in priority order. Options on the simulator command line may not have equivalent mapping environment variable or FSDB dumping commands. When options are set using different methods at the same time, as we previously mentioned, Verdi will resolve the value of each option in priority order and behave according to the union of all the option settings. Now let's take a look at some of the frequently used dumping tests. The FSDB dump file is used to specify FSDB file name or limit the FSDB file size. FSDB dump bars, as we previously mentioned, it dumps signal value changes of the specified instances and depth. As for FSDB dump on and FSDB dump off, it is used to turn on or off the FSDB dumping. Now let's try an example. I've used FSDB dump file to specify the FSDB file name as my FSDB. An FSDB dump file is used to specify the dumping depth and scope. This will dump all the signals in the module instances below system. Notice that the two lines here can actually be combined into one line using FSDB dump files. And the syntax for FSDB dump files is dumping depth, instance, and options. You may refer to the Verdi documentation for more details on the syntax for FSDB dump files. Inside my run script, I've set up the path for Verdi and VCS and added the debug access plus all option to enable the debugging capabilities. And after I run the simulation, I will use dash SSF to load the FSDB file in Verdi. After I've executed my run script to load the FSDB file in Verdi, we can see I have an FSDB file name called my FSDB. And all the signals in the module instances under system are available. Now let's try another example. 
I've created a tickle script, and inside my script, I'll be generating two FSDBs, namely A and B. I've used FSDB dump rush command to specify the file name and enable the initial dumping for A. After 500 nanosecond, I've also used FSDB dump bars to specify file name and enable dumping for B. At the same time, I will use FSDB dump off to turn off the dumping for A. After another 500 nanosecond, I will use FSDB dump on to turn on the dumping for A again. At the same time, I will turn off dumping for B. In my run script, the path for Verdi and VCS is set, and debug access puzzle is added to enable debugging capabilities. I will use simv-uzli-i to import my tickle script. Now the simulation is finished and I've loaded the two FSDBs, we can see inside a.fsdb, the dumping is disabled between 500 and 1000 nanosecond. Whereas for b.fsdb, Dumping is enabled only during 500 to 1000 nanosecond. And that's the end of this training demo. Thank you for watching.